Bubbly Steve is available for pre-order at shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. You've got less than a month to pre-order this 15-inch plushie. Check them out. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And nobody cares about Masters of the Universe Revelation except for the media, mm -hmm. who wants you to get outraged. And I, I don't think it's working very well. I think I think fans are starting to get wise to mm -hmm. to how this this goes down. They're just using it to try to attack fans more and using it as another chance to, to, to kick and punch people um, with their words. And then it's funny though, because they, they keep going back to the same thing, Ghostbusters and, and The Last Jedi and all these articles that they keep, they keep, you know, clutching their pearls so damn tight while yelling about people clutching their pearls of fandom. Yeah, and I don't think they actually believe it. I, I really don't. I, no, I, some of them do. They just, some of them are, are angry. Some, well, I'm going to be honest. Some of them are angry women who just want to attack to attack people for you know because they're mad. Yeah, we uh, we brought this article up uh, last week. I think they just want to stick it to the men that they think that they're some kind of uber bastardized feminist who wants to stick it to men. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. Another article popped up a couple of days ago. You know why is Revelation so divisive? We've got this. We've got a Vice article popping up, and it's basically trying to be like, "Hey, the fans are just a, a bunch of entitled whiners." And here's the thing: if they actually, get to, you know, they all want to talk about why it's so divisive. If they actually are honest about why it's so divisive, and they 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 tend to try to be, but then they have to get all these nasty digs in there. It's like just be upfront. Here's why people are pissed. It's yeah. not that hard, but they can't do that without making sure they have a but that they they make sure they have some you know tax on the way out. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about that, and I, I I do think this is about trying to keep the interest alive in the show because it dropped off a cliff quick. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as people realized, Hell, we don't even talk about it. And we I were like in the middle of it. We were in the middle of it, and other than that that weekend and maybe a couple of days afterwards, just you know because it was funny, I have completely run out of give a shit for this whole topic. Um, you know, it's interesting because I haven't been keeping tabs on it. You know, there have been a lot of articles and we haven't covered no. any of the stuff because it's the same old shit that we've we've seen time and time again we're with only, like The Last Jedi. We're only bringing it up because it's indicative of the larger issue. Yeah. Yeah. And the larger issue is the media wants you to be angry because mm -hmm. they get paid when you get angry. So we're going to we're going to Hulk smash. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> we're going to we're going to talk about this and the uh, general lack of interest. So uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants. Guys, we're over 229,000 subs. Thank you for the support. So, yeah, He-Man. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Masters of the Universe Revelation came and went. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a fart in the wind. Uh, for, yeah, for annoying. Nobody cares. Uh, it disappeared. It stunk and then it was gone. Yeah, it disappeared from the Netflix top 10 quickly, like within a day or two. And again, I want to point out that I think the biggest mistake they made with this, besides the fact they sidelined He-Man, even if they, the second half of the story um, fixes that problem, they should have kept it as one unit. They shouldn't have yeah. split it into quote unquote seasons. Five episodes is not a season Netflix. No. Um, they shouldn't have done that. They should have kept it as one chunk and I don't think they would be getting as much shit if it turns out they do fix it, which who knows. Yeah. Now it's interesting. Grace Randolph who uh yes yeah, it's, it's it's funny. I, I mean, I, I do watch Grace Randolph from time to time. We don't agree with her on everything, but she got a screener copy of Masters of the Universe, and she's like, man, Kevin Smith really should have kept his mouth shut because mm -hmm. basically everything that uh, people like Clownfish TV said it was going to be. And uh, she... I didn't she, see she'd said this. Yeah, I didn't either. I, I scrolled down here, and I'm like, oh, wow. So she said, yeah, within the second week, it's dropped out of the top 10. Uh, she said, you know, it's it's been forgotten in less than two weeks. Uh, so it makes it a more serious situation. We'll see what happens with part two. I mean, I think it's already done, right? right it's I true. don't I don't think they can reanimate it. But it's interesting. She said they kept trying to say they were review bombing it. They said, well, if nothing sent Netflix a clear message, the fans stopped watching it. And it's yep. like I said, Coco Melon. Yeah, it's beating is beating Masters of Universal Relation. Coco Melon. Coco Melon. Well, Coco Melon's really popular. It's really popular. But it's mostly a YouTube thing. So it, it's beating, it's beating this big, huge He-Man revival. She-Ra, and you know my feelings on She-Ra. It stayed in the top longer than this did. It did. I, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this. But I think, objectively, I think She-Ra and the Princesses of Power was a better show 
them revelation. Well, at least it it, it 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 was honest about what it was. It was honest I didn't about like what it, was, but yeah. it was honest about what it was. Yeah, I didn't care for it either, and uh, you know, it was more the again the theatrics around the show. But at least it had Shira in it. That means I, <laughs> me, yeah. Well, me saying that, yeah, right. Me saying this still does not any endorsement of the show. I still think that a, a movie is stupid, and the Shira is can still just you know forget about it. It's, I, I don't think they're going to get their movie. And if they do a movie, it's probably going to be classic Shira. Probably. Yeah. But um, at least it was honest about what it was. I didn't like what it was, but at least it was honest. You know, what worries me about this, though, being a fan of, of classic Masters of the Universe and Shira, is I am afraid this is going to be brand damaging. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid that, you know, they've got this other, you know, CG He-Man that's coming down the pipeline that might actually be okay. It's got a pretty good pedigree, regardless of how the, the graphics look. The people working on the show, it seems like a pretty solid crew, but I am concerned that people are going to be like, screw He-Man, screw She-Ra, we're done, we're out, we don't care, Mm -hmm. it's, they ruined them both, and we're done. Yeah, I mean, that's what's probably going to happen. Um, I don't know what they were thinking, and this whole thing could have been avoided, too, if they just been honest about what it was, said, hey, it's a Tila show. Yeah. If they'd just been honest about it, could have avoided a lot, which is something that we're going to talk about in this one article. Yeah, so... Why is Kevin Smith's Masters of the Universe revelation so divisive? Uh, it's not that it's divisive. It's, just, it's not really divisive. People are just pissed off. Well, that's just it. They keep writing these articles. Like, they're like, and, and you think, okay, they're going to be honest. But they're not honest. They're too busy trying to take a shit on the fans. This is yeah. another example of that. So we have this article that was on Game Rant, like, four days ago. And they're talking about um, what happened. And, of course, they have to go with... Beginning as an advertisement for toys aimed at kids and masquerading as a cartoon. They keep using this. As soon as they say that, we know it's a straw man article coming. And by somebody who probably never watched the show or gave a shit about it, but wants to to school the man babies. Um, Because we keep hearing this stupid argument. Oh, Shira was the same way. It was like, well, it doesn't matter what they do with it because anything's better than that old piece of shit toy commercial. Right. And you know what else? She-Ra and He-Man, uh, even today, are they're using it. Well, not She-Ra so much, but they would be using it to sell toys. Same thing. Just because you use it to sell toys to keep a show going with the money doesn't make it automatically bad. I don't know why they keep saying this. Um, they act like if it was made to sell, it was made to help sell toys and it was like a partnership with the toy sales, it automatically makes it garbage. No more than a show not make, not being made to sell toys that can't fund itself is automatically good. Yeah, I... If it doesn't toy, they're not usually interested anyway. Pretty much. I mean, that, you know, we've talked about this before, you know, pitch meetings for shows. They sit down, they're like, you know, will, basically, will it toy? I know when we pitch shows, we had to, to have... Uh, you know, wh- where's the uh, merchandise potential? Right, because that's where all the money's going to come from. Yeah. The stuff isn't cheap. They're not going to do it out of goodwill and make no money. Half a million to a million dollars an episode. And I'm yeah. sorry that yeah. these, these people can't wrap that around their little brains, but it is the way it is. And then here we go. So he, and they were talking about he's a safe, pro- safe property in the hands of middle-aged king of nerds. He hasn't been the king of nerds for a long time. No, and I think I think that's where people are extra salty because they're like, Kevin Smith isn't going to do us wrong. Kevin Smith is one of us. Kevin Smith isn't going to lie. Kevin Smith isn't Hollywood. And this this show, yeah, Kevin Smith is 100% Kevin, he's Hollywood. He's been Hollywood for a while. Yeah, a long Where have time. you been? And they said that, that, well, they're mad because it takes time to focus on the female character. No. no. Again, this is where I'm going to start no. correcting this person who clearly has no idea what the hell they're talking about. Um, Tila was always an important character, which is funny because Kevin Smith keeps mentioning that. We've mentioned it many times over the years. Tila was always important to the show. She always was a main character of the show. But she wasn't an unlikable trope to prove strong woman, you know, before. She was strong because she was strong and she was an awesome character. Now it's like, what can we do to make her like a, a walking meme? Yeah, and she's not Tila. I'm sorry, they tried to defend, like, well, Tila's always been important, and Tila's always been this, you know, she's... Tila always, wasn't a catty, psychotic bitch. This character is not Tila. Like, they can't even get the basics right. Mm-mm. This character is not Tila. She is, like you said, a trope of, like, ooh, strong woman, side shave, manly arms, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, selfish, unlikable, completely unlikable. Her best friend, doesn't want her, her best friend's dead, and she's supposed to be being pissed that no one told her he was He-Man. I mean, you, okay, yeah, you, I understand being mad about that. But if, as a woman, a strong female, you know, not a character, real person, if my best friend died in front of me, 
I wouldn't be so mad. About, I mean, I wouldn't be happy about the fact that they didn't tell me something everybody else seemed to know and I was cut out of it. But that wouldn't be my main focus. I'd be like, oh, my God, my best friend's dead. How am I going to tell his parents? What am I going to do with my best friend? Oh, my God. What are we going to do? What, who's going to protect Eternia? You know, that would be like my, my thoughts. It wouldn't be, well, you didn't. And when I saw him again, I'd be like, oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad to see you. Not, well, you died, so I couldn't tell you off. Yeah. And the thing is, is she didn't give a shit about protecting Eternia. She walked away. Yes. She, she was man at arms. She was the man. She was the boss That's lady. That's a loyalty symbol. And she she walked away and she went and started her own business and she didn't give a shit what happened she to the rest of the planet. She literally threw a temper tantrum. Yeah. yeah. You know, that honestly is the antithesis of strong female because I'm tired of this whole, the strong female, well, they basically are a dude with, you know, a dude that's supposed to be a woman, but they're a dude in every way. And then they turn around and throw something in there like they, they're mad or have a temper tantrum and that makes them strong. That doesn't make them strong. That makes them an asshat. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like tired of this. But they're talking about he man strong, evil, weak, by the power of grace, skull, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, yeah. So this is basically, a, clearly, these are things everybody knows if you don't watch the show. But they're basically talking about what are people pissed about? People are mad because, because it gets down here, you know, because of strong fee representation. So they said oh, the first God. nostalgia and fan ownership. So they're going to go there because, you know, people, fans think they own it. Well, you know what? After 30 some years of keeping it around for you to repurpose it and and you're banking on that fandom. Yes, they have a say and they kind of own it. Didn't again, just to bring it up, you know, regarding Kevin Smith, didn't he spend a good chunk of his career uh, kind of owning Star Wars fandom and owning Batman fandom mm -hmm. uh, only to do a heel turn because it was a property he didn't care about? That's it. Same for this he, writer. Yeah. Something they don't care about. Yeah. Uh, He-Man does mean a lot to a lot of people. She-Ra does too, Masters of the Universe. And again, if it were actually a Tila show and they had been honest and upfront and said, hey, this is going to be about what happens if, if uh, He-Man dies and Tila has to you know, save Eternia, but she didn't give a shit enough about anybody right. else and to... if they yeah. had been honest, people would have been like, a lot of people still would have been interested because if you were a fan of the show and you're a real fan of the show, Tila was always important. So you would be like, oh yeah, what an interesting premise, you know? But a lot of people would have watched it if they had just been honest. I think it's more, it says more about them and how they think about, you know, fans and then how they think about how, how women are portrayed to fans, that they are so worried that they had to lie about it because they didn't think anybody would watch it otherwise. I mean, that's more sexist and misogynistic and shitty than, you know, anything that they're blaming the fans for. Yeah, they, yeah, and that's why they didn't want it getting out that it was going to be, I mean, they, they kind of alluded to it at PowerCon, they had the slides, but um, I don't think anybody knew exactly how front and center Teela was going to be and how different she was going to be. Which is from... fine, they've been honest, the fact that they weren't. Yeah. That's more yeah. sexist and dickish than anything. And then they said, female representation in a traditionally male-dominated area is being confused with woke culture. No, 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 no. There's a difference. Like, again, if you'd watch the show, you know, Sweet Cheek should know this. She always was a, a strong character in the show. Always has been. Yeah, yeah. Um, she was already, you know, a strong female representation in a male-dominated show. Was confused with woke culture because, um, I'm sorry, but they had made Tila. They could have still made her a strong character, but why did they have to give her the sh half-shaved head? Why is she suddenly a lesbian for no reason? I'm sorry if this pisses people off. Woke culture? They're going down a list of checkboxes to make oh, yeah. sure that it, 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 it represents a certain demographic. You can't tell me that, you know, given that the Masters of the Universe franchise, now there have been, you know, strong female characters in Masters of the Universe. Always have, you know, mm -hmm. Queen Marlena, Evil Lynn. Uh, you know, there, there have been a lot of, you know, secondary characters that were strong, even in the original filmation show. But predominantly the cast has been like 90 to 95% male. You can't tell me that the intention, because it wasn't just He-Man. She's not bringing that up. It was every male character. Mm -hmm. got sidelined, pussified, or killed. Pretty much. Well, that would be what's being confused with woke culture. There's no, no. confusion. I no. think we're pretty clear on that. It, um, go ahead. I was going to say, no, it's clear. it was clear that whoever was working on the show, whether this was Kevin Smith's decision or Netflix's decision, that they were like, what is the most masculine show ever? Oh my God, He-Man, the Masters of the Universe. Well, let's, let's turn it, in, let's turn it inside out and make it all about woman empowerment. Well, that's, here's the problem too. Back in the day, He-Man was both boys and girls watched the show. Mm -hmm. And since there were so many girls watching the show too, they decided to do the spinoff of She-Ra. So they had a show that was predominantly male and they had a show that's probably female. They've already rebooted the predominantly female show. So of course the assumption would be if you're rebooting, you're calling it Masters of the Universe and you're showing all this He-Man stuff, deliberately not mentioning the Tila part, 
Um, of course, the assumption is going to be, well, they had She-Ra. This is going to be about He-Man. So you already had a show that was that was traditionally male dominated. We had that with She-Ra, and you guys all made the same damn argument then. Okay, fine, we'll give you that one. But this is a show that was made for dudes, and there was a lot of girls who watched it too. Yes, but you knew that what people expected because yeah. that was it's literally called He-Man. Some fans are furious that the current political climate has infected He-Man. Kevin Smith's not having it. No, Kevin Smith got called out. I think Kevin Smith's been told to shut up. He's been told to shut up. He's moved on to Clerks. Like, he was at, look, it is very obvious that he was in this for the paycheck. That is it. It didn't mean anything to him. He said repeatedly that He-Man, he wasn't a fan of He-Man. He was in it for the paycheck. They brought him on board because they thought he'd give the project geek cred. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, he cashed his check, and now he's working on Clerks. He and doesn't care. when they talk about how, you know, well, he was listening to the fans. He listened to one fan, the guy from Netflix, who was his boss on this. Yeah. That was the one fan he listened to. They're basically going on because it was white guys. Uh, the majority of the fandom is nerdy white guys. Again, not true. And this is a very racist and hypocritical and bullshit because a lot of people weren't white who watched it. A lot of people weren't male who watched it. But you guys keep running with these stupid, same tired arguments. That in your, why are you trying to say you're defending this woke culture and, and, and you, know, you know being inclusive and diverse? You are, meanwhile, marginalizing and shitting upon the actual diverse audience that make, kept this around for 30-some years. Like while you're trying to look how look how white and white savior I am, you're actually you know shitting on people who were not white males, who liked the show. So like three white males were behind this show. Yeah, exactly. Which uh, I pointed out many times. Yeah, and and they decided that hey, we're gonna make it all about women. And then the one guy, you know, he was the one that was talking down to the black fan about why you know. <laughs> I'm was- like, this is another article that does the exact same damn thing. That yeah, but the thing is, is that just in general. People have already moved on. They got mad about it, but you know, it's getting to the point now where it's like, just expect it. Any classic franchise that comes back current year, Hollywood reanimates the corpse, expect a kick to the balls. Mm -hmm. Just expect it. That's that's what you're going to get. It is never going to come back the way you remember it. It's very seldom going to be reverential of the the source material. No, because they don't care. They don't care. It's, you know, it's a Trojan horse. I mean, this was, again, if they had been honest, about what it was, call it the death of He-Man or something, there wouldn't have been the backlash. Well, this person does get that in there, but then they, they do it with slaps. They said, you know, to be fair to the outrage, the problem is, for some isn't that Tila is a focus or that any woman has overshadowed He-Man, but that Kevin Smith did very much say the show was going to be one thing and then it'd be actually another. Um, yeah, because they did. They kind of basically said T-Man is continuing where the show left off, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, so they say, they, so you're like, oh, okay, they're going to agree. No, no. They basically said what we said, which it would have been more fair to call it, you know, you know, something with Tila, Chap- Tila Chapter or something like that. Um, and, but then they go on about the review bombing. Because, of course, it's okay when the critics, you know, give something positive. That's not that's not review bombing. Or when a bunch of people make a concerted effort to go in, you know, inflate a, a score for a film. That's not review bombing. It's only when people, you know, don't like something. And they keep saying something that maybe is legitimately shitty. It, it isn't because it's shitty. It's because it's review bombed. Maybe it's just shitty. I mean, it's not that hard. Yeah, back to what Grace Randolph said. She said, look, you, you can talk review bombing, but the fact that people just aren't watching the show... Mm-hmm shows exactly so you put the review bombing quote unquote on top of the lack of interest and you can see exactly where this show is with fans yes because he-man fans and she-ra fans are pretty passionate people and and the new audience they courted that she-ra audience if they were watching it as much as they were going to watch she-ra uh it would have stayed in the top 10 well, longer we even saw speaking of review bombing we even saw that with she-ra when it wasn't doing that well in the reviews that there's whole groups of them on, on tumblr and Instagram and stuff getting together and they were running over there and they, you'd see all these upvotes, five stars, yay lesbians. That was the review. That was the review. But that's not review bombing. When, when, it, when it inflates a, a, a something that's a divisive show to the good, even when it, the, the, the majority of people are have in the meet in the middle, truth in the middle, um, that's not review bombing. But if you vote it down, even if you legitimately vote down because you thought it was shit, no, no, you're review bombing and you're a toxic person. But it's it was okay when the critics review bombed Rise of Skywalker, though, because they didn't like that it was not the same as Last Jedi. That wasn't review bombing. That was just something honest. 
Yeah. But it's, you've, if you voted down Last Jedi, you were review bombing. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's look, it's the only people who care are the media. And they want outrage, clicks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they even said, hey, Kevin Smith can maybe keep his patience next time. He knew what he was getting. Look, you can't tell me that Kevin Smith, who has been covering and involved in in a, a nerd culture for as many decades as he has been, didn't know that, that putting out a He-Man show without He-Man being in the lead what was going to get. I think he did right. know. I think that's when we said what we said and he came after us. He made sure he tagged in Netflix and Mattel at Netflix at Mattel about what we said. I think, you know, I'm not trying to take sides here, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't tell them. He thought this might not go the way they thought. And then when we said it and people were reacting to it and he's like, see, I kind of told you guys, you know, I'm not giving him a pass, but I'm, I'm saying someone who's so in, in with the fans would have known. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Gonna do well. This is literally what he used to talk about. He would he would do uh, you know the evening with Kevin Smith, and he would do that, and he'd talk about his experiences in Hollywood, and and uh, you know the ridiculous things that producers would come up with, like we want a Superman movie, but Superman's never going to wear the costume. He's not going to fly. He's going to fight a giant spider. I'm like, dude, cheaper because <laughs> yeah, because we want a more gritty, realistic Superman. It's like, dude, you literally have become that producer you put mm-hmm. something out that's like hey let's do a he-man show but let's let's kill he-man the first episode get rid of all the other male characters and have it be about tila and the coded lesbian friend of hers right and here's the thing like i said if you didn't already have a female version called she or that was more geared to women but you already bastardized ruined that and you know and that was okay so you already ruined the one i didn't see you making more male representation than she to make it more fair. No, no, it was okay to be all ultra female because back when that was, you know, being done, the the, the flavor of the month was lesbians. Um, and I'm not, you can laugh, but it's true. You can see that you can literally, and like last year it was Black Lives Matter. How many licks does it take? A one, a two, a three. I hope it's more than three. But anyway, I'm just, I'm just, no, oh, anyway. <laughs> So when you have the show that's geared to men, and that's something Grace Randolph said too. She's like, there was kind of like you had the dude show, but girls watch too. Yeah. And you had the girl show, which boys watch too, but they were clearly pandering to one demographic. Yes. Yes. And then you turn around and you make the show that was the boys show for women, all about women too. So they get she and they get Masters of the Universe. And I'm a girl who's been a fan of the show for years and I hate the new the, what they did. And they made Tila suck and I love Tila. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say it again. I can't believe I'm saying it, but objectively... Shira and the Princesses of Power was a better show than Masters of the Universe Revelation. They they were because it was still Shira in her own show. Yeah, uh, I mean, granted, it was a very altered version of Shira, but at least you know it. They didn't lie about what was going to be. They flat said this is going to be a complete reimagining reboot with LGBTQ plus uh, representation. Um, we knew what we were getting. They. They didn't lie about it. Well, they didn't it. come out about that. I knew what we were getting just because I knew oh, yeah, he was a showrunner. Show and but, I've seen her behavior still. on Twitter for years. But, like, you knew what you were getting. This one was, like, fans were promised a continuation. Well, they, they said that, yeah. Of the original show. They t- The first trailer, it was all He-Man. Mm-hmm. It was all He-Man. All the merchandise, all the tie-in merchandise, the cereal and the, all that stuff. Classic He-Man. So what did they think was going to happen? Yeah, what did you think was going to happen? And I mean, I like, mean, again, the second half might, you know, reverse bad decisions. But if that's the case and it does reverse bad decisions, they should have launched at the same time. They should not have split it. I, I don't even know. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just tired of the media coming at this. And most of them have no idea what the flip they're talking about. They don't, they never watch a show. They don't care about the show. They just want to throw, throw punches without even knowing, you know, if they're hitting the right person or why. I love it because these these journalists all act like they're above outrage. Like, well, now I'm going to descend from on high and tell tell you plebs. Uh, well, you know what? I'm a journalist too, so I guess my opinion matters as much as yours does. Uh, and if you're a dude, I'm a girl, so I trump you anyway. So you know, but, you said trump. I know even better. Mm. But it was funny. I don't want. I'm not going to the article for the writer, but it was interesting because the person posted the article on Twitter. And look, look at all the, the likes and shares and comments and retweets it got. Nine. Nine likes. Again, this this goes back to nobody gives a shit. Like, I don't even give a shit. The only reason we're talking about it is because it's kind of the code into this situation. Like, I don't know how many people are going to come back for part two. Um, You know, I, we do collect toys. We got a lot of toys. I've passed up on Masters of the Universe Origins figures now mm-hmm. because I'm like, I am not feeling it at all. Not that Mattel gives a shit. 
if some, you know, 40 year old dudes buy in toys or not, but they should, because if, if enough people feel that way, it's not going to be good for business because who was, who was the show for at the end of the day, it wasn't for kids. Mm -mm. It wasn't for a new audience. Cause you had to have some pre existing understanding of, of what mm -hmm. came before. It wasn't for old fans because it didn't really connect with the old show and they destroyed a lot of the characters and they killed off people the, are like, the main. They're like, Oh, they're mad about Tila. You're right. They're mad about Tila because that was not, Tila. That was not. So you're, Tila. you're you're right in the regards to the fact that oh the fan the, oh the man babies are mad because they ruined their girl because Tila's the lead. No no no. People are mad because not because Tila Tila that they put in the lead is not Tila. If they had made Tila like Tila and they'd been honest about it, people would not have been upset. I, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. The He Man's nipples thing. You know, it'd be easy to defeat the dude. Just go up to him and grab his nipples and purple nurple him. I mean, it shouldn't be hard to to take him down. If you, you grab his, his nips and twist. So wait a second. So all these journalists have problems with boob armor. I know. I was thinking it. Is that why we have battle armor, He-Man? Because we got to cover it up so you're not seeing his nipples. Well, no, I just think it's funny. But they're, they're, they're not, none of them are, are going on about how he, well, he how, look how he's dressed. How dare he? How dare they dress him like that? That's, that, that's you know, sexism. And that's, you know, objectification and all that stuff. No, if they say anything, it's because, oh, it's unrealistic body standards. But, you know, if a girl's in, in boob armor, how dare they? Because that's subjectifying women. But it's okay if they do it to He-Man. Yeah, well, I love his his Sailor Moon transformation where oh my he gets God, that was the cheek. bare bare ass naked and he, like, he oh my God, grows he, a loincloth. Where's his cheek? Well, you think that's a loincloth? Where does it come from? I only have one answer for that. Well, when he turned thirteen, <laughs> his uh, magic sword it was raised aloft a lot more often than it used to be. He'd wake up at night. Well, we know where the hair. Well, I'm sorry, the loincloth. It's not fur. It's just. It, anyway. Yeah, there's a there's a meme out there where he should. Is it really? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so anyway, are we gonna wrap this up? Yes. Yeah, I think I'm with I'm with Grace Randolph on this. I think put a fork in. I don't think people are coming back. I think it's done. I think it's done. I'm just so sad. But I knew we I, we were hoping we were wrong. God, I yeah, this is the thing. People think we're we're like totally getting off on this. No, we we're like as soon as they said, hey, powerhouse animation and uh, you know Mattel's behind it and not DreamWorks, it's like. Oh, this actually has a chance. This actually has a chance of being really awesome. And it wasn't. Mm -mm. It just wasn't. And we had a whole video going on about how excited we were. Yeah, yeah. Um, and even after when he said, oh, that isn't, that isn't what happens, I'm telling you. We even did a video then talking about it. It's like, okay, I, well, let's hope he's right. I that's retracted. Awesome. Yeah, we retracted it. We're like, well, he, he answered us. And he said, that's not what's happening. So let's let's believe him. And then more evidence came out that that's what was actually going on. I was like, so, oh, shit. But, you know? you know, the whole point of this video was just because here comes the media again, days after the fact, trying to get hits, trying to stay relevant, you know, straw manning the same damn arguments yep. all over again. It's tiring. It's old. You know, it just, just stop. And especially if you, you have no, you don't even watch a show or don't care about it. Just don't even talk, you know. Word, word of advice for any fan of 80s, 90s. IP that's getting reanimated. Don't get excited. I'm sorry. It sounds like I'm being a major buzzkill. Don't get excited until you hear what's good because it's going to come back in, in Pet Cemetery zombified form. And Hollywood, for, for fuck's sake, sorry, Mom. Stop taking characters and then turning in what you did with Tila just because, oh, strong woman. Okay, just stop. You know, that, that, I'm tired of hearing that's what a strong woman is. No, it's not what a strong woman is. I, you know, there's a difference between being a strong female character and being, look me man with, you know, shaved head, you know, and boobs. I mean, it's not the same thing. And you keep, you, you're, you're literally a joke at this point. That, yes, you, your, your version of a strong female character is literally a meme and a joke because it's so off base and so ridiculous and so misogynistic and shitty that it is, it is, it is it's a complete joke now. So just stop. All right, so we're going to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.